In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, good people of God, and welcome to today's edition of Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. Today is Tuesday, the 7th of September, 2021. It is Tuesday of the 23rd week in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 15. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 145. The response to the psalm is, How good is the Lord to all? The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 to 19. I read from the gospel. It happened that in these days Jesus went out into the hills to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James and John and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them, and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples, and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came forth from him and healed them all. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Let your prayer transform you. Let your prayer transform you. Beloved of God, today's gospel passage invites us to pay focus on the importance and necessity of prayer in our lives. Two great things happen after Jesus prays, that is, the effects of his prayer. 1. 
he chooses his 12 apostles after prayer, his closest and immediate collaborators. His prayer aids him in his choice. And two, after his prayer, people touch him and he heals them because power comes forth from him. All this happened after his prayer. His prayer guides him in his choice of the twelve, and thanks to his prayer, because he makes himself one with his Father, power comes out of him that heals those with every kind of sickness. Often, dear friends in Christ, before any major event or decision in his life, Jesus spends time in prayer. Not just time, but enough quality time. He spent 40 days and nights in prayer in the desert before the start of his public ministry. Confirm Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. He spends the whole night in prayer before choosing the twelve. Luke chapter 6 verses 12 to 14. He will spend the entire night in prayer in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane before his passion. Matthew chapter 26 verses 26 to 56. Dear friends, this is to show us the important role prayer plays and its necessity. In prayer, we commune with God. We get into God's mind and He inspires us. We see things His way and whatever choice we make, He guides us. This is because we involve Him in every decision and choice we make. Prayer also empowers us. You cannot get into God's presence and live the same. We are filled with God's Spirit, and that Spirit leads us to do great things. Prayer is entering into the life of God. Beloved, if truly we pray, we will find it easy to let go offenses, because after praying, we listen to God, He talks to God, and we discover how easy it is to let go. If truly we pray, we will find it easy to love. For how can you get into God's life? You commune with Him and come out and you find it difficult to let go. So you see, if truly you find it difficult to forgive and let go, if you find it difficult to love, then ask yourself how authentic is your prayer life. Though we say often that we pray, the truth is we do not allow ourselves get into the prayer. Qualify your prayer. Quality time spent with God in prayer is transforming and life-changing. We too should learn to pray before every event, great or small. Before your choice of work. Before your choice of a life partner. But you would also realize that many times we rather tend to God when things have become difficult. We do not involve Him at the very start. We are not saying when things are difficult we should not inform or involve God, but most often we bring in God as a last resort. No. At the very start of every enterprise, be it great or small, involve God in prayer. When we too truly pray, the effects will be seen and felt in our lives. Remember that prayer does not mean everything must be as you have asked from God. No. To have entered into prayer and allowed yourself to be transformed by your prayer means whatever the outcome, you accept it because it is the fruit of prayer. And if what you asked for does not come, you are not disturbed or offended. You remain peaceful because you know this is what God wants for you. This is the difference between those who pray and those who allow prayer transform them. Let us take a very practical example. Imagine Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed. Beloved, he prayed. He prayed and sweated blood in prayer. And what did he ask for? That if it were possible, the cup of suffering could pass him by. He prayed. 
Earnestly, he prayed. But what happened? Did the cup pass him by? Not at all. He still drank of the cup. But what happened? His prayer transformed him. He took his suffering joyfully and carried his cross till the very end because he knew after his prayer, if that was God's will for him, then he accepted it. His prayer gave him the grace to persevere till the very end. Same with us, dear friends. Our prayer must transform us. That even after praying and things still happen the way they do, you are peaceful. You are tranquil because you know you prayed. And if God permitted it that way, then let his will be done. This is what it means to say, let your prayer transform you. Let us pray for that grace. That as we beg of God, whatever we ask of him, we should realize that our prayer should transform us to accept his holy will for us. And what is more, let our prayer transform us. And if truly we pray and allow our prayer to transform us, you will discover that the many things you thought were difficult to do, you will do them. Because you get into life of God, you get into his life, you get into his mind, and you are transformed. Oh dear Lord, let our prayer transform us. Let us be filled with your grace when we get into prayer. And let us be able to spend quality time with you in prayer. Because whatever we do without involving you, we will never get the best of it. Dear God, listen to the prayers we make to you. And above all, give us the grace to accept whatever your will is after our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.